Welcome back to Tingle All the Boxes, where we're going to look at all the support races on Manicato Stakes night now. Yep. Uh, the rail's going to be in the true. Looking outside, it's overcast. Dead four it was, I think. So dead four. I've done the form for a good three dead four. So. Yeah. All right. Sports bet prices in the first. The spotless handicap. <clears throat> three thousand metres. Oh. This will be riveting viewing. <laughs> uh, Buxted four dollars. Crafty Cruiser, three thirty. The Dont, three twenty. Tanner Lot, seven fifty. That's about it, isn't it? Um, mate, I've got Verdant or Verdant, how do you pronounce it? I just said the same thing twice uh, on top here. Um, I actually had him marked. I backed him last start. It was a midweek race, and I had him marked down as a horse that when he drops down in weight, even if it means going up in class, uh, he'll get the cash. Um, and that's exactly what happens here. I've got a watch on number eight, No Song, No Supper. This is a full brother to No Wine, No Song, Sydney Cup winner. Um, and the breed typically take time before they hit their peak and uh, he's jumping up sharply in class, but um, keep an eye on him. Uh, I've gone with Crafty Cruiser. Beat the Don home last start by a length. Beats it a lot worse at the weights. Meets it a whole one kilo worse at the weights. Is it one? Yeah. I had it as a lot worse. Verdant was six, carried 60. It carried 59 and a half. It's got 55 and a half here. Verdant's <laughs> got 55. How am I travelling? Flying. Uh, meets it a kilo worse, but the thing was it was strong to the line over the 2400. <clears throat> I sense it's going to be finding the line better than Verdant over 3,000 metres. That's why I'm tipping it. $3.30. I won't be playing in a 3,000 metre. Handicap. So we can go straight on to race two? Race two. Beautiful. What have we got here? Oh, the city. There's another city troop handicap. We've got a city troop handicap on Saturday too, I think. Yeah, we do. Oh, there's city troop handicaps everywhere. 2,040 metres for the uh, Phillies and Mares. Manila Jewel, $6. Innocent Lady, $5.50. Silent Attitude, $7.50. Rock Hit, $4.40. Uh, <coughs> Candela. $7. Mate, I really like this Jelly Baby. Um, keen to have a little shot here, fire a shot here at, at, at decent odds. What price was she? Sorry. Jelly Baby. She'd be about 25s, 30s, or I'd say. $26 for you. Yeah, look, I, I, she's a nice horse. And um, she worked through, she's probably going to want a bit more than this, a bit further, I mean, um, in time. But um, I'm happy to have something on her here. Her last start was a really good run. I backed the winner in that rock hit, and I made a note of... Um, Give me a close eye on this one. So, uh, yeah. All right, I've, I've gone with um, Candela on each way basis. Look, she's, mm -hmm. she's racing really well this mare, this campaign. Last five runs, you know, she's, she's hit the line twice, run second, and a 2 4, she hasn't been too far away. There's a few in this race coming in with uh, the Shadow Margot form out of Cranbourne last start. Yep. And this is the one that meets the others better at the weights. Need a little bit of luck from the draw, but if she can get that luck, uh, she, the 2,000 metre suits. Mm. Only one two from 13, mm. but she has run second seven times. So on an each way basis around the $7 mark, I think you could do silly things and have something on her. All right, so we're going a little bit wider there. A little bit wider. A little bit wider. All right, race three. There we go. The major putts handicap, 1,200 metres. Just imagine that they were racing over 2,000 metres. <laughs> It'll be a slow last 600. <laughs> All right, Exelotte is 460. General Truce 9, Sea Lord 350, 280 Sir Fernando. Yep, that was. <clears throat> Mate, got Ex Exelotte is on top here. Uh, he carries weight well, this horse. Um, and he's a genuine sort of listed slash group type horse. Not group one, obviously, but he's, he's good enough to run in those types of races. He's five kilos over the minimum here. Um, I think he's a good bet. Got the right form as well yeah. for this type of race, I would have thought. Yep. Okay. Happy to back him. Uh, Might be charging, but, you know. I'm with Sea Lord. Sticking with Sea Lord? Yeah, yep. look, I think he's found a beautiful race here for him. Uh, he carried 54 there last start behind Instinction. Only got beaten 1.8, and they, they beat him off late. Prior to that, he got beaten half a length behind... Miss Marks and McClintock. McClintock's franked that form somewhat by mm -hmm. running very well. What are they running? 
McClintock ran in the um, against How Much Do You Love Me, didn't he? Mm. Was it How Much Do You Love Me? In the Caulfield Sprint, I thought. No, no, no he ran no, second. I don't know. Was it the King's Rose Race? Yeah, I think when it was she the got King's beat. Rose Race, exactly. Yeah, 1400, yeah. Exactly. Mm. That's good form for a race like this, I would have thought. He yes. won first up at the Valley over this distance in a listed race. From that run, he only goes, well, he goes up four kilos, but he goes back in class quite significantly, so. Mm. Loves the Valley too. Handles the Valley. Again, Steve Brown, yep. Darwin Blake. He's done a fantastic job with these old horses. And I just think this is a lovely race for him. I think he fits into it beautifully, even with the weight. $3.50. Good price, I reckon. What price is excellent, these again? Four sixty. dollars yeah, Okay. Yeah. Goes good second up to Excellentes. Got the tongue tie on. There you go. For the first time. Race four. The Crockett Stakes, 1,200 metres listed race for three-year-old fillies. <coughs> Snipsu is $11. Aguada, $3.20. Cavalry Rose has been scratched from this, by the way. So she's definitely running on Saturday. Okay. Yep. When did that happen? I'm not sure. I haven't been paying attention, obviously, a fair while ago because the flats for equator were 380 to 310. Either yeah. 3 now to 320. Satin Rock, we've been informed we'll be coming out of this. Yep. Uh, Purple Storm, $6. $6 Angelic Light. And. <clears throat> oh, little, so that market will change again. What so I reckon, I reckon Equator's going to come into around oh, probably 260 to 280. Okay. Well, I had Cavalry Rose on top, so <clears throat> that's kind of thwarted my, uh, you know, what I was going to say. I will say, that I'll, I'll, I'll go back to Roller Bones then. Um, she's a horse in the last four starts, two of them she's just played up and done so much wrong she gave herself no chance. In the other two races where she has given herself a chance, she's either won or performed very admirably behind good class horses, Which better ones than Which are the two that she's played up and given herself no chance? The last one? <clears throat> Yeah, but well, she hung out badly. She had a war she got given a warning, and two starts back. Okay. Well, look, two I starts back. The tactics adopted on her at Caulfield were hopeless. Yeah, probably. I don't right. know what they were, what they were thinking going back on her when they'd been riding her on the speed. Yeah. The only other speed in the race was Cavalry Rose, and mm. as the race panned out, it just went to the front, dictated yep. and bowled it. Like why anyway? Well, I think they'll go forward in this one. Oh, great! You'd, Unreal. you'd have to thanks, assume thanks that. Thanks a lot. Why are why you, why you Well, I was on a last start, mate, and I was filthy because I expected it to go forward. And I, they'd gone three strides and I was well, gone. take it up with John Thompson, not me. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I didn't advise him to go back. I, I think I think, uh, well, I think she's a good bet because I think the way I had it assessed, if, if she jumps and, and performs well, she's a genuine $6 chance. Um, and that was with Cavalry Rose in the field, so she probably comes into you know four dollars fifty five bucks without it. Um, that's if she jumps. You should be getting double that price though, because she can do a bit wrong in her races. So I reckon that you can have a definitely have a bet on it. I just had a sneak a look over there. It's uh, thirteen dollars. I think a greater wins here. Uh, she's just a genuine, genuine speedy little sprinter. Does everything right. Makes her own luck. Quest borderline whether she gets a strong twelve hundred, but. Yep. If you're going to get her, I would have thought Mooney Valley's the place for her. She'll bounce, she'll put herself into the race, she'll make her own luck. She's short enough now, but the race is thinning out. If Cavalry Rose and Satin Rock come out, well, there go two of the three main chances. Roll the bones, she just, she's just, oh. <laughs> she's going to be the death of me, that horse. She'll win now. You know that. Don't I'll, I'll be having something on it, but oh, there we go. I'm just not happy with what happened there last start. Not happy at all. Yeah. Anyway. Oh well. All right. Race five. What do you got? The Essendon Mazda Challenge, the 955 metre sprint. The, the day after the 1,000 metre sprint. Is that right? What? The thousand, uh, so the day before the thousand metres? Yeah, this is Friday night, mate. Yeah, I know. Just... I've really stuffed him here because we did Saturday first and it's just... It's too much for me to take in today. Excellent. All right. All right, uh, let's have a look at the prices here. It's what do you crunch got? time, 480. Ooh. No means go, 850. Uh, um, get on, 380, $8 Duke of Cornwell. Vatican 550. Yep. All right. Uh, I've gone here. It's crunch time here. 
Um, <coughs> coming off a break, <coughs> race is well first up. Last last start, last prep, obviously, in second to Stratcom. There's um, Handy Horse. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's good enough form for a race like this. I think Barrier 6 is really good in these 9.55 races around the valley. Same with... Right. If yeah, because you just don't want to be punching up the whole way on the inside. Yeah. <coughs> Can't say I would pay much attention to the 9.55 metre <laughs> race on a Friday night. Well, you know, if you did, then you'd be all over this race. No. I did back snitch them there. Did you? Yeah. The last one. Yeah, he was got the cash. Good thing, wasn't he? Um, yeah, no, I've got this thing on top. Good horse, good sprinter, very fast horse. Could definitely take some of the 440 as well. Big watch for me, the two Steve Brown horses here. No means go. Uh, he ran in all the good sprint races up in the top end during the carnival. He's won six of 14. The fact that he's brought him down here, you know, as I said, he, I've just got a lot of respect for this trainer because he, he travels these horses and he has success with them. And he has done for a couple of years now. So he knows the right sort of horse to bring. So you just got to keep your eye on him. Yep. The other one he's got in the race is Duke of Cornwall, former John O'Shea horse. Blink has come off. Yep. Uh, he has some decent form from Sydney. You know, form around horses like Key West, who at the time were flying. Yep. Uh, Barrett, Moores Creek. The like. So I've got a big, big watch on those two, and just mm. I'll be interested to see what happens with the market. I want to see them. Vatican, hard to knock, freshened up since his last run at the Valley. Only finished one and a half length behind Broken. Gets in quite well here at the weights uh, with the 56 <coughs> and a half he meets. I'm getting a couple of kilos better for that, that performance where they clashed. They're the three for me. Uh, but as to what I back, I'm not 100 percent sure yet. It could well be no means go or Duke of Cornwall, but I just want a little bit of a lead mm. from the betting. Okay. So once I get that lead, yep. then I'll go bang. You'll be ready to go. I don't know if I'll go bang, but I'll have something on something. In Brown Town. In Brown Town. What? Stephen Brown. There yeah, you all go. over his horses, Brown Town. Right. Brown No pain, no gain. Alright, race seven, mate. We've done the we've already looked at the uh, the Manicato. Yes. I'm, uh... Race seven is the Jeep Phillies Classic, 1600 metre group two. The Jeep. All right. Big chill, eight bucks. Love for Ransom three. 420, mm. Stella Lonte. Marisa, four dollars. Mm. Fifteen dollars right down mm. the bottom, volume one. All right, Stella Lonte. I got it on top, clearly. Um, two clearly? Yep, clearly on top here uh, for mine. Uh, you go two starts back, she carried 58 kilos. Yeah. She sat last, they went slow, she came wide. Yeah. You can just forget forget it went round. Its form outside of that has been impeccable. Um, <clears throat> obviously, three starts back, finished a heads or half neck second, it says here, to Love for Ransom, who's in this race. Uh, they went very quick in that race, and Love for Ransom just mowed them down. And yep. she was up there. Well, she wasn't up there, she, she stayed midfield, but she. She went, she kicked clear around the bend. Yep. Um, and last start, she was beaten three lengths in a group one behind Commandy Jewel. I'm, I'm speaking about the thousand guineas. I think, I think she's, I think she's a great bet in this race, and uh, I think the, the price is pretty fair as well. I'm pretty keen on Marisa. There you go. Uh, the first point I really want to make is this thing's on the up in its campaign, mm. right? All the main dangers here in betting. They've had a Ran in a thousand guineas. They've had a grand final. Yep. Right? And this is, okay, they've come through that run well. Good money race here. We'll run it. All right? Whereas my fillies, I'm guessing, been targeted at this race by missing the thousand guineas. Mm -hmm. Comes in at fifth up. She's improving with each run. Her last run behind Cavalry Rose was an eye catcher. Got back and just mm. charged home. Off a six-week break. She'll strip fitter for that. I just think this is. I just think, think she fits into this race. Twelve hundred, really, sixteen hundred. Really well. Any concern? No, it's not. Not no. the way she found the line, and, and she's got the moody factor. I think. I think there's plenty of pluses and plenty to like about her. Um, Kazan Luck, a bit of a query. Hey. Kazan Luck, the number number seven. However you pronounce that, query horse. Yeah. Definitely a query. Watch on that. Yeah. Um, coming out of the Morphville Guineas. Um, the run prior to that. Mm. Uh, Marisa carried 59, she carried 56 and a half, and they fit in here on the same weight, so I'm saying Marisa will handle her. Okay. All right. Yep, no worries. Okie doke. 
So, Marisa for me. Yep. And as I said, I'm pretty keen on it. I'm pretty okay. keen on it. There you go. All right. Yep. The last race. The Triforce Country Cup. What have I done here? 40 $4.60. Off the wingman. Seven fifty. The wingman. <laughs> <laughs> Five dollars fifty, Lord Wimbledon. Oregon Spirit, four eighty. Uh, Canonized, five fifty. Hell, <laughs> those. Come uh, on, wingman, fire up. What do you got? Uh, I, I, I don't have a tip in this race. I cannot pick this one to save myself. Um, I'm interested to see this. Um, what's it called? G Force or whatever you call it. It's a import. Yeah. Uh, went okay there at Cranbourne in, in an easier race. I think it's fair to say. Um, and uh, <coughs> Henshaw, I had it. Look, if I was pushed for a tip, I'd, 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 I'd go it. But um, I really don't like anything. I'm tipping the wingman. You're tipping the wingman. Oh, I'm tipping the wingman. There I think you it's go. got a really good chance in this. It comes out of that, uh, the Sartorius race at Caulfield. Yes. Okay, the race net video comment. Took hold, worse than midfield, fence and pulled. Held up for a clear run off the bend. Steered wide before weaving back. Weaving back towards the fence and finishing quite well. Yep. It was beaten four lengths, but as I said, I think that's a very strong form race. Yes. Drops from the 58 down to 56 and a half. Got a good alley. Got D Oliver to steer. I think it's $7.50, $8. What was it? Seven fifty. I think it's good each way back. There you Close go. the night. There you go. The close the night. Go out. Bit of kitty for the Cox Plate day. I've already had my bet there. Really? Can't see myself doing too much action on Cox Plate though. No? No. Alrighty. Alright. Are we doing the best bet here? If, yeah, is this, you got one? Uh, yes, uh, I'll go early. Verdant uh, in the first and each way Jelly Baby in the second. Alright, I think uh, what's the name's going to be too short now, a greater. I can't Kimmy believe I'm making a horse a special in the 3000 around the valley. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I think Sue Lord will win. Okay. I think yep. Sue Lord will win. Uh, and those two in the last two races, Mereza and the Wingman, I think it's a good each way bet. I reckon $7.50 is a good price about that horse in that race. The Wingman each way. The Wingman each way. All right. Yeah. Anything else? Um, You've done a lot of waffling today. <laughs> I thought we, we were, were going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> You're flying. All right, we'll be back uh, next week for Flemington. Derby Day. Derby Day. All right, beautiful. See ya, have fun. <laughs>